In this video, we're going to talk about graph shaping, uh, graph sketching, graphing functions, all right, they all kind of mean the same thing. All right, so we now have all the pieces we need to sketch a decent graph of a function. Pretty much your whole math career until now, you've been using either like weird shortcuts or kind of some assumptions or something to get graphs of functions, or you've only been able to graph lines and parabolas. Right, but now we can graph more stuff because we have all this calculus knowledge to help us. All right, so what should we do in order to get a really good graph of our um, functions? All right, we should know the exact location of critical points. All right, so kind of exactly where they're going to be on the graph. Should they be high or should they be low? We should know those exact locations. We should know when our function's increasing and decreasing, so we should know if our graph's going up or down. We should know if our graph is oriented correctly. And again, if we put these together, we think about those four different shapes our graph can have. And then also we should know our intercepts. Are there any places that our graph hits an axis? Because that's a really important feature. All right, so let's put that all together. We're going to x squared minus 2x minus 3. All right, well, first, because it uses the original function, let's do our intercepts first. Right. So when our original function equals 0, or we plug in 0. So if I plug in 0, that's going to give me negative 3, and that gives me the point on my graph right there. Right. I can also set my equation equal to 0 and solve it. So at positive 3 and negative 1, there's my x-intercepts. All right, so now my intercepts are done. And I can go on to increasing and decreasing. So for increasing and decreasing, the first thing I'm going to do is find my derivative. And find my critical points. All right, there's no place this derivative is going to be undefined, so I'm just going to set it equal to 0. And I see it's at x equals 1. So x equals 1 is a critical point. If I put that on a number line, some test points. Again, I'm plugging my test points into my first derivative. So I plug in 0, I get negative 2, so everything's negative. If I plug in 2, I get positive 2, so everything's positive. So my function is going to be decreasing to the left and increasing to the right. All right, one thing we want to do is our critical points, in this case, 1. We want to know its exact low value because it's going to help us figure out right when that switch happens from increasing to decreasing. So I'm going to plug 1 into my original function. If I want to find an actual point on my graph, I'm always plugging into the original. So f of 1, 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 3, uh, negative 1, negative 4. Right. So the exact point, 1, negative 4 is on my graph, and that's where the switch happens from decreasing to increasing. And last step, concavity. That has to do with my second derivative, so now I'm going to find my second derivative, which is just 2, which means my graph is always concave up, because 2 is always positive. All right, so my graph is always concave up, and I have to switch from decreasing to increasing at this point. All right, and if you know, it's helpful to know some basic ideas. This is a quadratic, so it's going to be a parabola. I just connect all these. And I get that graph. Right. So that's the best graph you could ever have of a quadratic. Your intercepts are correct. That This is called the vertex of a quadratic. Um, you don't need to know that name, but it's important where that turn happens, but you got it exactly right because you did all this stuff for increasing and decreasing. All right, so here's one for you to try on your own. I right, do the exact same things with x cubed minus 4x. All right, I'll you can pause the video and work on it, and I'll show you the answer, the full worked out example in three, two, one. And after a lot of work, this is kind of the important stuff that you end up getting. So our intercepts, using my original function, I can plug in zero to get my y-intercept. That's right here. Set it equal to zero, I end up getting three x-intercepts there, there, and there. All right, so those are the intercepts you get from your original function. Next, I want to determine increasing and decreasing. So I take my derivative, and my derivative is 3x squared minus 4. Never undefined, so I just need to figure out when it's equal to 0. I ends up getting equal to 0 at this value here. All right, plus or minus 2 squared, 3 over 3. When it's an ugly number like that, you can just put it into a calculator. This ends up being like 1.1. 1 .1. All right, so I have a positive 1.1 1 .1 and a negative 1.1. .1. I make my number line plug in some test points, and I picked 5 because I wasn't sure exactly what that number was yet, but I knew it was definitely not bigger than 5. 
So I just picked my test points to be a little bit farther away to be safe, but you could pick negative two and positive two. I would figure out where my function's increasing, where my function's decreasing. So it's increasing all the, every time left of there and everything right of there. And in the middle, it's decreasing. I, one other thing I did with a calculator is I plugged these values into my original function so I can get these exact values. All right, it turns out the number I'm plugging in is a little bit bigger than one. The number I get out is a little bit bigger than three. Right, so those, gra those points are pretty accurate. And the last thing is concavity. I take my second derivative and set it equal to zero. Again, also check undefined, but it's a, uh, just a polynomial, so it's never undefined. So zero is when the concavity happens. I would also want to figure out exactly where that inflection point is, where the switch happens. But I already know zero, zero is already on my graph, so I already have it there. So I have all my important information. All right, and let's just go through, have my three intercepts, my original function. Increasing and decreasing, it's increasing up until that first point, decreasing from there, and increasing forever after that next local extrema. And then concavity, it's concave down until zero, and then I have my inflection point and it's concave up after that. So it has all the information I need, and that's an exact graph of this function. All right, so here are some important things from this lesson. I right, always create those number lines to keep track of your derivative information. I right, also kind of separate out your first and second derivative. I right, using lines on your paper can help. That way you don't start confusing different parts. I right, keep everything in track. I right, finding more points on your graph will only make it more accurate. So you could try to do it without finding the exact location of your local extrema, but then you're not gonna know if your graph goes up like this or goes up really high or something like that. So finding more points, plugging more numbers into your original function will just give you more dots on your graph than you can connect in a way that makes sense. And knowing your basic graph families will save you a lot of time. Because in that first example, if you had these dots, if you know your graphs of parabola, you just connect them versus trying to do some curve stuff going through them as well. So knowing your basic graphs, quadratics, square roots, cubics, all this stuff is gonna help you uh, do these a little bit faster.